Hi guys, Painted Patina with Andrea here, and I'm going to show you today how I got this really nice blended um, finish on this piece with Annie Sloan chalk paint. Um, it may not, it may be hard to believe, but I actually got the this finish with um, Florence, which is actually a pretty bright um, green by Annie Sloan. It's Annie Sloan chalk paint chalk paint and Florence, and I also use, to get the burgundy brown or purple look, um, I use burgundy, and I blended both of these with graphite, which is a really dark charcoal color that has some really blue undertones, which is why you see more purple here than really burgundy or pink. Um, and then again, it brought the green back down to a nice, really pretty blue. So what I have here, um, is it was painted with French linen because it's kind of just what I had on hand. So the base was all done in French linen. And then I actually had some leftover of my mix, which is um, the Florence and Graphite, which is this color here. Um, that's kind of what came out. It's kind of just a nice blue green um, color. And <clears throat> I had some leftover on my brush. So I just kind of threw it on here to let it dry because it's really important to let these layers uh, dry in between so that way it doesn't pull the paint back off. Um, chalk paint is water-based so a lot of times you can pull the paint back off if you aren't careful. So again what I've done is it's, it's dried and actually once I put it on there I lightly misted it with the spray bottle of water just so that's how you got some of these nice drips and it gives it kind of a, a toned down softer feel. So we're gonna go ahead and get started and what I start with is um, and I've I've watched some other great tutorials online and that's kind of where I've got some of this. So look around and see what other great tutorials I just kind of looked on YouTube for a boho, a boho painted finish. And there's some great tutorials out there and I kind of just did my own thing. So I'm going to show you how I got my look. So first what we're going to do is just lightly mist our piece with a little bit of water. This sprayer broke on me, so I had to replace it with a new one and it's spraying too much water. So you want something that's a really nice, nice, light mist and I have a brush here from Artisan Enhancements which I have a nice little coupon code for you guys um, to get some of their products which they have brushes and stencils and foils which I'm going to show you how to do in another video but I'm going to go ahead here in the middle and start out with some white and I'm just really lightly brushing it I barely put any bit any of it any paint on my brush as you can see there's not very much here and if I get too much I kind of just wipe it on my drop cloth but I'm just going to lightly brush it and I'm just going to create it here in the middle like you saw, like you've seen in the finish piece on the top and front. So, and as you can see, I'm really kind of, it's almost like a dry brush, but you've got some water in there. So it's kind of just giving it a nice soft feel. And again, a really, really light hand is really important. So I gotta get a little more white because I know that I'm going to tone it down with some of my my grays and my blue, my blue green. Okay, so now that I feel like that's nice and smooth, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pull out some of my graphite here. I know you guys probably can't see that, but I'll show you on my brush exactly what I do. Um, and then my nice mix in my chicken and white bean chili container. Great containers when you get those soups from Vons or whatever you may have in your town. Anyways, um, so I'm gonna go ahead and wet my brush just a bit. I'm gonna use the same brush just because I want it to nice and to blend really nice. So I got my brush just a little bit damp and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grab some of that blue that I started with. As you can see, I don't actually, I want a little bit less about that much on the brush. And again, I'm just gonna do it nice and light. Really a light hand. And I'm just kind of framing it, the white that I already did, and bringing it, again, a nice light hand. Sometimes it's hard to explain, which is why I made this video, so you can kind of just watch what I'm doing. So again, I'm just framing it in, letting it kind of touch the white. And I am gonna grab another little chip brush here because I got a little too much dark on this side. It's a little bit too thick with the paint. So I'm gonna bring some white back in. And again, just really lightly brush it back and forth. Okay, so now I'm gonna continue. I'm gonna, I'm wiping off a bit of the blue that was on this brush. 
so that way it's nice and dry so you can see and I'm gonna go in with my black actually so I've got a bit of black here and it's starting to dry so I'm gonna mist it a little bit again so now I've got my black and I'm just gonna come in here around the edges let's see get a better angle here So I'm just using this and nicely the white is kind of making my gray for me. There's not a whole lot of mixing when it comes to that. And I'm just, again, nice light hand, just constantly blending it. And luckily this green blue, it really does dry a lot darker. And once I added the black wax, I got this nice deep, deep blue. So. And from the top, I'm just gonna bring it down into that white. And if I go a little bit too much into the white, it's okay, because I'm gonna add some back in anyways. <clears throat> it's not quite dark enough for me down here, because the white kind of tones it down, so I'm gonna put some more black in there. And up here as well. So as the paint kind of sets up and dries, I have a little more, I can kind of blend it a bit more. And that helps it mix in with the other paint. And the water really helps blend these colors together. So I'm gonna go ahead and let that dry and we'll come back when it um, is a little more dry. So as you can see, I'm starting to create that. I'm not done yet, I need to bring in some more white and then I'll show you how I get that final nice soft look. But again, I need to let this dry because there's some water in there and I don't want to start pulling off the, the base coat that was underneath because then you're just going to have an uneven finish and you don't want that. So thanks guys and we'll be right back. Okay, I wanted to show you guys really quick. I had um, some of this black is a little bit too heavy in this white for me. So I'm going to show you how I blend it. Just taking a chip brush. I do like to use my bigger brushes, but they're all covered in paint. So I'm using a chip brush. I'm just going to get it a little wet. So it's just a little bit wet. And... Um, I went ahead and brushed it back off so there's not a whole lot of water on it because now that this is set up I've, it's been sitting for about three to five minutes so it's not quite super dry so that's why I'm using a little bit of water and I'm just gonna kind of scrub this you don't want to press too hard because you will pull it back off but as you can see I'm kind of eliminating those harsh lines which this set up a little bit more than I thought. But just lightly mist it. You can go ahead and do this nice little circular scrubby motion. Don't run out of breath like me. <laughs> and that's kind of given me that nice soft blended look that you see on the rest of the piece. And I'm just blending that. The graphite, which I kept referring to as black, it's graphite. Graphite, the Florence mix, and the old white all together. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and bring it. My brush has a little bit of, it's super dry. It's not gonna come off, well, a little bit. And I'm just kind of bringing that through the white because that gives it, it just blends it all nicely together, back and forth. Just a really light hand with that. And hopefully you guys can see, since I've sprayed some water on it, it's given it a little bit of softness. So I'm gonna go ahead and spray a bit more just so it, Helps blend it. Now, while that is setting up, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I did the um, really cool copper that you see on the front. I used uh, Artisan Enhancements Leaf and Foil Size. It's a really nice sticky, sticky glue that um, works great for uh, foils and also gold leafing. So I do have some foil in here because this stuff is so sticky, I won't be able to get the lid back off. So having some foil, if it gets really tacky, I can just rip it apart. And that gives me access to it all the time. Um, leaf and foil size and again I'll have a coupon code attached to the video so you guys can get some of the artisan enhancements products they also sell foils in all kinds of colors and for this one I used I believe this is the brush copper I'm not exactly sure so but I think it's brush copper so I'm just going to I've already applied the glue I did that a little bit ago because you need to let it set for um, about 30 to 45 minutes so this has been setting I'm gonna do I'm gonna do it with the, uh, you want the metallic side up. 
because it won't work the other way. This plain kind of crepe paper uh, needs to go face down. It needs to stick to it. So I'm just going to go ahead and I don't even have to put it on there very nicely. You can see I've only done what I've what I've done is I've taken a small brush. I use this nice little like stencil brush guy and I just brushed it on the parts where I want this glue where the I want the foil to stick. So then I'm just going to scrub it on here. And when I pull it off, you'll see the magic. So that is how you how easy I got this nice gold finish. I can go back in a lot of times especially for a piece this detailed, I use my toothbrush because it really gets in there for me. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and finish doing this on all the other pieces. And then um, later on when we wax, I'll show you how I, I toned it down and got it to be that nice soft uh, finish that you see like right around here. So thanks guys for a little bit. And um, you really wanna let your finish dry before you start your next layers. Um, I'm here in Arizona where it is 10% humidity. Um, it hasn't rained and I don't even know how long. So this water-based paint is going to dry a lot faster um, here than a lot of places, especially in winter. So I know a lot of you guys are even frozen right now. So it, just keep in mind dry time could be different. Hopefully my cat here doesn't get in the way of the finish. Anyways, um, what we're gonna go ahead and do is soften this just a little bit more, and I'm just about almost done. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and start again with the white, and we're gonna start with, again, just misting it lightly. <clears throat> and I'm gonna be working just with, um, to start with a chip brush, uh, just because I go through quite a bit of brushes and my other brushes are a little too wet right now because I just rinsed them all out. So I'm gonna highlight this white yet again. And I'm just gonna keep working it. That's kind of the key is just to keep working the paint. A lot of these um, water-based chalky finish type paints are going to uh, just get better the more you move them around uh, unless you're looking for a nice solid finish because it kind of pulls it off as you can see so I am going to go ahead and I'm gonna go a little bit heavier with that um, with the black and the edges because that's just the look that I have going this brush is just a little bit damp already otherwise I would have sprayed it with a bottle so um, I want some water in there I'm gonna start by just kind of stippling and scrubbing to kind of create that nice soft corner that you see on the rest of the piece. So, and that's kind of how I'm getting that nice, um, I need this to be a little wet, more wet. This is that, the amount of um, moisture that you want, that's just gonna have to be something that you play with and learn along the way, but just go light at first because you can always add more. It's easier to add more. And again, I'm just, working the paint back and forth and alternating between brushing and kind of doing this scrubbing motion. And that's kind of what's given me a nice soft feel. And luckily your brush will kind of just continue to pick up the different colors and it helps do the blending for you. Again, 10% humidity, so I'm probably gonna be using a little more water than, you know, you guys in the more moist states. <laughs> All right. So as you can see, I'm kind of getting that nice, soft edge around the white here. This is still a little bit harsh for me, so I'm gonna keep working it in. Now here's something I'm gonna do in this um, I'm gonna take my brush and I'm gonna put just a bit of white just on the corner so the rest is still gray and I'm gonna put that white part right here on the side so that way I'm working both of them at the same time and then again kind of do my scrubbing motion and that has blended that night that green back into the grays and the blues so what what I'm seeing now is I kind of have 
more of a gray tone here. So I'm gonna take the same brush and I'm gonna add back in a little more of that green. Now I'm wiping a lot of it off. As you can see, there's hardly anything on this brush. So I'm gonna start with a little bit of a stipple through here and go back and kind of scrub it back in. And that's adding some of that blue green back in. Again, alternating between a soft brush and that kind of scrubbing motion that I do. And I'm just gonna go around the edges here. Oops, a little bit too much there. See, that's what you get. So you don't knock some of it off a little bit first. Okay, now that's getting a little too muddy for me and it's starting to pull underneath, so I'm just gonna leave it. When in doubt, leave it and come back to it. Let it set for a bit. So I'm gonna move back over. I'm gonna do this side over here because I put too much paint. So very lightly, a very light stipple. I'm not adding a whole lot of water this time around because we've already put so much water into it that it's just gonna start pulling the paint back off. So now I am dragging my brush through the white. It is leaving a very slight subtle bit of the green, which is kind of something I want. Now I'm gonna go back over this. I'm gonna wet my brush a bit. and reactivate this kind of. Okay, now you can see it's a little more spread about. Now I'm gonna go back and forth across here. This is getting muddy here for me. This was my biggest fear of doing a video. I guess it wasn't gonna work out right, but I guess I'll show you how to fix it when it gets a little too muddy. I'm kind of gonna go back in the same thing I did with the white. I'm adding some black on the corner. It looks like I got a little too much there. So I've got some black just on the corner and I'm gonna do a nice little stipple. Hopefully you guys can see that. And then again, it's got some green still on there and I'm just gonna blend it by with that kind of scrubbing and brushing back and forth. So, and that's pretty much how I got that nice subtle look. Um, I'll, I'll look at it here before before I let it really, really, really set up, um, and I might go back in and add a little. You know, bring in the. I'll have to look at it as a whole and see if I want to bring in the white. A little bit smaller and if I do you'll see but it's just the same motion is going and alternating between the kind of scrubbing and the brushing back and forth and that's given me my really 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 soft look final thing that you always want to do is just lightly mist it and don't do too much unless you want it super drippy I'm not really in not really looking I love the drippy looks but that's not what I'm going for on this piece um, I kind of just want a little bit of the spotted um, soft look that you get from misting it with a bit of water. So we're gonna go ahead and let that dry and then I'll go ahead and wax it and also show you how we're gonna do the gold. All right, as soon as I ended that last segment, I realized that I need to do something with this piece here. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring the purple into that and show you guys kind of how I'm uh, getting, finishing the edges and blending that all together as well. So this is still setting up. I'm gonna try not to mist it, so. Um, I'm gonna get just this right here a little bit wet and what I'm gonna start with is I wasn't even sure so I'm winging this you guys are gonna just gonna figure it out with me I'm gonna go ahead and start with a bit of white though so I just put a tiny bit on the edge of my brush I'm gonna knock some of it back so I just have a little bit and I'm just gonna kind of dry brush it in and I I'm not gonna go all the way down to the bottom of the leg because I kind of want it to just do its own thing and continue down. <clears throat> so I'm gonna take this tiny little, um, it's a stencil brush. I actually get them from Artisan Enhancements and they're great for stenciling, but they're also great for these small areas and I actually used it to get these detailed parts with the, the gold as well. So I'm just gonna do some black here at the top. I need a little more on my brush. Or graphite, sorry. And I'm just gonna kind of bring it down 
in through the white. All right, and that's looking pretty good. Just It's just a nice soft finish, and I'm gonna add some water to it so that it gets uh, nice and blended and soft like this. And so I'm gonna go ahead and take another brush, and I've got a bit of the purple, which is, again, is the burgundy mixed with the graphite. So I'm just gonna bring some of that in too, just on the edge here. And since the rest of my brush is pretty dry, I'm gonna use that to kind of just drag it through for everything, for the whole piece. So now that purple, and actually my brush kind of touched the edge here, so I've got, might as well throw in a little bit of the purple on that edge. And again, I'm just winging this, so this is kind of how this, this piece came together. I didn't really have an exact plan, but let's go ahead and add some purple there too. And I'll mist it. Okay. So I'm just going to let that go ahead and sit. And um, that should be good. I added a little bit of a highlight there. Um, and so we'll let this sit up and then we'll be waxing it. Okay, guys. This has set up. It has dried. Um, again, I'm in Arizona, so it didn't take very long. And um, you might want to let yours dry overnight. It's really, you know, trial and error kind of, unfortunately. Um, but to be safe, you can let it dry overnight if you're worried about it. I have already applied one coat of Annie Sloan Clear Wax to this to save time in the video. Um, and now I'm going to go ahead and apply the black wax so you can see the kind of difference that that makes. I'm, um, I'm a huge fan of Annie Sloan's brushes. Um, unfortunately, all of mine are pretty worn down right now because I've used them for years and years and years. So I actually just started using these uh, wax brushes from Artisan Enhancements and it's the European wax brush, I believe. Um, but I really do like them. They have a, they're pretty soft. This one already is nice and dirty. I'm not very, I don't usually clean my wax brushes. Once you dip them back in the wax, the solvent kind of softens them again anyways. So anyways, this is an Artisan Enhancements wax brush. I'm gonna put just a smidge of Annie Sloan, where's the label? Annie Sloan Black Wax um, on my brush. And I'm gonna go ahead and start working this in. So again, I've already got a thin layer of clear wax and I've wiped it back. So it's, you know, this is nice and solid. It's not wet at all. It's just, it's been rubbed in and wiped back off. So now I'm gonna add this black wax. So, just a nice thin layer, and I know that probably scares the heck out of you guys, some of you guys, to see all this dark go on here, but I promise it'll blend it all nicely. So I'm gonna work, because the black wax tends to set up fast, black and dark wax is set up pretty quickly, that having that um, layer of clear really helps, but I'm gonna work around the edges because I don't want that white to get super dark, so I want that to be put on and wiped away right away. So I'm not adding any more back on, and I'm just gonna bring it through. With wax, you wanna put it on nice and thin, but even. So sometimes, because the paint is a little bit uh, textured or body, you kinda wanna go back and forth to get a nice smooth, and you can also kinda go in, it doesn't really matter which direction, just get it in there. Anyway, so I'm gonna go ahead and start wiping back. So I'm gonna wipe that white section first because I want that to stay pretty white or gray whatever you know I'm gonna keep turning my rag Make sure there's no more excess left. It should be nice and smooth right after. That rag's pretty full. I'm running low on rags. Old t-shirts, whatever you want to use. Something lint-free, obviously. So once this starts gliding nice and smooth, kind of how it is now, I know that I have taken off as much as I can. So now, as you can see, it's di darkened it up quite a bit. Um, 
it's not quite as dark as it shows in the video I think because of the lighting it's getting a little dark here but um real quick I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I darken up that's pretty much the end of it for how I got this finish it's pretty simple it's just practice with moving your wrist with the paint and working it together and um, just practice with how to blend basically um, now I'm going to show you how I tone this down. I've already covered it in um, one coat of Artisan Enhancements Clear Top Coat Sealer, which is awesome. Their products are a soy oil-based product, so they work with oil and water-based products for the most part. Um, they're mainly sold by Ar Annie Sloan Stockists, however, they work with all sorts of paints. Because it is that soy oil base, they really work with a whole line of pretty much anything, any paint product. They work really well. So anyways, <clears throat> I've already put the clear top coat over, which works with my wax and also my paint. So I can go on top of it, I can go, I can layer them. So they're pretty interchangeable, which is really nice. So I'm just gonna add, they've already, so instead of doing um, clear wax, I did the clear top coat sealer because it um, pretty much makes the stickiness of any of the leaf and foil size that was left over it, it makes it go away rather than making it gummy so that way it just it just gives me a nice barrier so I'm going to add my black wax on top of that at the same time I'll wax this bar it away brings out the nice burgundy uh, purple that was underneath and tones down the gold so that's pretty much how I got this if you guys have any questions feel free to uh, post some comments and I'll do my best to answer them as fast as possible but um, check out artisan enhancements with that uh, discount code I'm gonna be giving you guys I think it's 10% off and uh, they, like I said they have stencils uh, brushes they don't sell paint products it's only um, different mediums and tools. So it's a really great uh, product to use, again, with pretty much any line of paint that's out there. Um, I'm, not, I'm not a representative of any paint line, so you know, use whatever, use this stuff with whatever you're using and, and let me know how it works for you. Hope you guys learned something. Thanks so much.